All right, folks, we are back. Now, the first story or the first official story of this episode, we are going to be talking about Disney. As you may know, last week, specifically on October 16th, 2023, it is the 100th anniversary of not just the Walt Disney Company, but also of Disney Animation. And you probably have seen throughout the year, Disney has done several little things to go and commemorate the anniversary, especially when it comes to like little montage clips that you would find online. But what Disney decided to do, uh, well, well, for the real anniversary, they created a little special. They decided to do one thing that would truly honor that 100th anniversary. And what they ended up creating was Once Upon a Studio. Yes, uh, uh, it was, well, the day before, uh, on October 15th, in which they actually did the world premiere, well, not the world premiere, but they did the public pr premiere of Once Upon a Studio. And by the way, folks, I just want to let you know that I will be talking about the short in its entirety and like all the things that have been going on behind the scenes and what happened in the short as well. So just to give you all a little bit of a warning, if you have not watched it yet, uh, please skip this part of the episode until you have seen it, because it will definitely contain a bunch of spoilers. But anyways, uh, going back to uh, what I was talking about, yes, with uh, Once Upon a Studio, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is the animated short to go and commemorate the 100th anniversary. Uh, it has a simple little plot line in which all the Disney characters uh, in the stu that have been created by the studio, uh, including characters such as uh, Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Donald, and many, many more, in fact, literally hundreds more, they all come to life so that they could be in front of the building and they would all have this one massive group picture, as like the one that you see right over here. And uh, yeah, it, it's basically this uh, big reunion with all of these characters from Snow White to uh, their latest animated feature or their upcoming animated feature, Wish. Now, one thing that has been fascinating throughout the week last week, uh, there have been a whole bunch of articles, or I think it was uh, from two weeks ago, like before the premiere. Uh, there were tons of different articles that would talk about the making of Once Upon a Studio. What is the journey that went to creating this animated short? Because from there, it was like the raving new piece of animation that everybody was just loving like it's been such a long time since uh there have been an animated project from disney or it's it's been since uh Encanto that there was this new piece from disney animation that everybody just fell in love with even the people who have been commonly cynical towards disney like they really love this short so uh, th this is the main thing that i want to do is to go and uh make a short summary about the making of Once Upon a Studio, because it really is a fascinating story as much as what they did in the short itself. Now, this actually all started with um, two filmmakers at Disney Animation, Dan Abraham and Trent Corey. Now, they weren't necessarily a part of like the big teams. They're not necessarily the biggest names at Disney Animation, but they would be working on several different uh, side projects, usually what would be found on Disney Plus, rather it be like uh, Zootopia Plus or Baymax. But one thing that they have worked on together that really ignited their collaboration was Once Upon a Snowman, which was this animated short, uh, a mid cool to Frozen, that tells the story of Olaf from his inception during Let It Go to when he would first meet Anna and Kristoff. So they knew that they wanted to go and collaborate on a project together. And they realized that pretty soon there was going to be the 100th anniversary of Disney. And they really wanted to go and create something that would go and commemorate this occasion. So that's where they thought up of this idea of this mega crossover, possibly the biggest animated crossover since Who Framed Roger Rabbit, to have 
all the Disney characters, or at least like the majority of Disney characters across the entire 100 years of Disney to come together so that they can go and take one group photo. And during that time, we see all the different little crossovers of a variety of different Disney characters, rather it be from the classics like Pinocchio, Snow White, Fantasia, up to like the modern stuff like uh, Frozen, Ryan the Last Dragon, uh, Encanto, Strange World, and even Wish. So they would have that mega crossover of everyone coming together. And they were trying to plan that out in secret and see if they would actually have uh, an idea if it could legitimately work out. So from there, uh, they pitched this idea to the chief creative officer at Disney, Jennifer Lee, to see if they got an idea if this could be something that could legitimately work out. So they pitched the idea and Jennifer Lee had to walk out. She had to leave because she was crying. She was legit in tears of the pitch that they were receiving. And from there, uh, Jennifer Lee came back and after wiping her tears, she said that it needed to be done. She was so moved by the idea and she just ignited. She said, go and make this happen. So during that time, and by the way, uh, the first time that the pitch occurred was actually back in the uh, fall of 2021. So this was a project that it was uh, technically two years in the making, but the actual production itself didn't start until like, uh, I would say at the beginning of this, well, not the beginning of this year. It was somewhere in 2022 because they said that the production was about eight months in total. So during that time in the pre-production, especially, uh, by the way, yes, uh, I uh, there's uh, I know like there's probably some stuff that I have to do in order to, you know, make some adjustments with this new setting. Like I, I as I am recording this, the people watching on Twitch, uh, they did get an ad in the middle of this. I do apologize for that. I'll try to see if I could go and uh, fix that up so that, uh, you know, that things will yeah, be working yeah. out accordingly. So, again, I'm sorry if the ads were uh, a bit unexpected but anyways uh back to what i was talking about with uh with once upon a studio so during the so yeah uh the, so dan and trent they were working behind the scenes and they were working in secret in order to make things happen to, to make this project happen but then the word started to spread that there was this mega crossover project that was starting to happen and more and more and more we start to see like these yeah, animators yeah. wanting to be uh, a part of this oh and uh thank you for the uh subscriptions right there uh thank you for oh well jay monty is gifting the subscriptions uh thank you so much uh but anyways as i was talking about yes they were starting to you know slowly but surely animators wanted to be on board because there is this idea that there's a project where you can go and work on your favorite character, that this is the opportunity that you could go and actually animate a character that inspired you to become an animator, that inspired you to have this passion for animation. This is their chance that they could go and finally work on that. And many of them actually got their dream come true to actually work on uh, their favorite animated character. And also, one thing that really did stand out from the animated short that, uh, of course, like it's one of the most talked about things is the combined mediums. And that was the biggest challenge of this is the fact that it is a combination of live action with all the film footage all across the studio. There is the uh, computer animation with the modern characters and also hand-drawn animation. And uh, even uh, in my source here from uh, the Walt Disney Company, they even said that the animation uh, is actually led by Eric Goldberg and Andrew uh, Feliciano, where Andrew was in charge of all the CG animation and Eric Goldberg was in charge of the hand-drawn animation. And uh, what, what is very noteworthy with the hand-drawn is that um, 
it, 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 it like not only did they bring back hand drawn animation in a much more prominent way uh, than they have like many years ago. Like we haven't seen this much hand drawn animation from Disney since uh, 2011's Winnie the Pooh. But or I mean, like there have I, I know technically or I know there have technically been like a bunch of other like hand drawn projects uh, that they have done, like uh, the get a horse short. But this one, however, like, my God, the hand drawn animation, like it is everywhere and it's like really out there. Uh, but um, the, the thing with this hand drawn animation is that they really did updated their teams for the first time in many years disney actually hired five apprentices five new animators to go and work at disney so that they could be a part of the hand-drawn department and don't worry this isn't like just some one-time gig they were able to actually keep their jobs to this day and on top of that not only did they get new animators but they even brought back some of their old animators uh, uh people who used to be animators during the disney renaissance now they actually came back to actually redraw some of their characters. Uh, these would include Nick Ranieri, James Baxter, uh, Ruben Aquino, Tony Bancroft, and Will Finn, all of whom decided to come back uh, so that they can go and help out to bring the literally hundreds of characters to life. And in total, by the way, uh, there are 543 individual characters from over 85 projects, including all the Disney movies, uh, some of the animated shorts, and even some miscellaneous projects as well. And I, I just want to go and make a, a comment that the more you would go and look at each of these characters, the more fascinating it is because like they, not only were a lot of the hand drawn, like not only were the classic characters uh, returned in hand drawn, but also they emphasize the style that they were from. Like, you could tell that there was a prominent difference between the characters that were done during the golden era of animation, like uh, Snow White or Pinocchio or uh, even Sleeping Beauty. Uh, and then there was also the characters that were done during the Xerox process, you know, like uh, the, the ones that were done like in the 1960s and 70s that have a much more sketch. It has a sketchier look like Sword in the Stone or the Jungle Book, like uh, one great example of a scene uh, of like a scene where you can know notice the big difference between the styles of the characters is with uh merlin when he was in the coffee shop with uh cogsworth the mad hatter and uh, several other characters and then suddenly you see Mo Mo moana just rushing in so that flounder from the little, little mermaid can have some water and you could tell that there is a big difference in the animation style between flounder or the mad hatter and with merlin so there really is a a, a good amount of attention to detail and not only that but i would even say the same thing with the computer generated characters even the cg ones actually do stand out from some of the modern ones like yeah they already had the models for many characters like from uh, frozen or ryan the lost dragon or Encanto, but they had to but considering that technology has evolved since they started making cg films uh they had to go and recreate some of the models like for meet the robinsons or chicken little and what's interesting is that when you do see characters like chicken little or uh wilbur and lewis from meet the robinsons you could tell that their styles are a little bit more primitive and i don't mean that in the bad way but i mean it in a sense that they still have that same style as if they were done back in the mid 2000s uh, compared to like the newer characters uh, that have a more sleek and detailed style like uh, Anna and Elsa or even uh, Sisu for example so the attention to detail and the craftsmanship in the animation is just beautiful uh but it's not just that though uh there are plenty of other noteworthy people that did work on this feature as well now one uh main attribute that you probably have seen a lot of different articles to go and talk about not just the one that i have over here but uh, another example is uh this one with uh entertainment weekly that would go and talk about one upon a studio as well as um wish that's going to be coming up in november 
But also they have mentioned that there are over 40 original voice actors who contributed to this. Which is honestly interesting because uh, when I did do my research when working on the uh, TikTok video talking about uh, Once Upon a Studio, I discovered that there is actually a total of 51 individual voice actors who came in and actually provided their voices for Once Upon a Studio to do new original recordings. Uh, and by the way, the, the 51 that I counted, that does not include the 28 archival recordings that were used to bring certain characters like uh, the good fairies from Beauty and the Beast to life or using audio recordings of Sterling Holloway for Winnie the Pooh or the Cheshire Cat. And uh, I have also counted that in total, there are 29 actors who actually reprise their original roles, like 29 of which that they were the original actors from the animated films that they were from. And I'm not, like, I know there are some like uh, you would have Jim Cummings that would come in and uh, be like Winnie the Pooh and Baloo. And then you would have uh, like Bill Farmer be Goofy and Tony Anselmo being Donald and stuff like that. But uh, what I mean specifically with the 29 original actors, I'm talking about like Edina Menzel and Kristen Bell as uh, Elsa and Anna respectively. Or you would have Jerry uh, Jeremy Irons come back as Scar or Nathan Lane return as Timon. Or you would also have... Um, Jody Benson as Ariel, Paige O'Hara as Anna. Uh, you would also have Tom Hulse as Quasimodo. Like you would have several of these actors. Like, yeah, there are some of the recent ones. Like it's no surprise that they would come back like uh, Kelly Marie Tran being Raya again. Uh, but uh, there have been some that it's been like such a long time that uh, these actors have played their characters and now they have come back to this, which is honestly amazing. Uh, but then there's also another noteworthy moment, one that I would say is my personal favorite scene, and you probably know which one I'm talking about, is the heartwarming moment where we kind of see this spiritual reunion of Mickey Mouse and Walt Disney, where Mickey is in front of the uh, in front of a portrait of Walt Disney, and then you hear a little song of Feed the Birds. And with that one, that is actually uh, very, uh, very interesting to mention because the little piano tune that you hear of Feed the Birds, that was actually played by Richard Sherman himself. Yes, the original songwriter of, uh, or one of the original songwriters of Mary Poppins, It's a Small World, and many other Disney classic music, uh, alongside with his brother, Bob. But with uh, Richard Sherman, he actually did return to the same piano that he used to play regularly for Walt Disney to play Feed the Birds. And it resulted in this very tender moment it was it was actually the first time in that short where i actually started to tear up it was such a beautiful and just a very heartfelt moment so honestly overall it's a, a, a overall I, I i will have to say it is such a beautiful passion project and honestly just by reading all the behind the scenes stuff you could tell that not only was it a big passion project to go and commemorate the 100th anniversary of uh, Disney animation, but it is also a passion project that is made with love, that you could tell that all these people who have worked on it, they, you know, they, you could tell those people love Disney and they wanted to put in their best contribution to uh, Disney, you know, to this short, that they wanted to make sure that true, that this truly does honor the 100th anniversary of Disney animation in general and that they would be part of that history. Now, I know some people might criticize that it is a bit of a cheesy kind of short. And I mean, there are a few things that even I would go and criticize myself. Like, uh, I would say that it is pretty dumb of the fact that out of all the freaking characters you have to get in order to go and take that picture, you chose the freaking clumsiest one with freaking Goofy to handle the camera to go and take the picture and stuff like that. Which honestly, it's like you can like I can assure you that about like at least 100 of those characters when they saw that goofy is in charge of the camera they're like 
oh hell no but yeah i know like maybe it's not necessarily perfect and there can be a few things worth nitpicking about but overall though um i gotta say that it's such a a, a great a, a great tribute and a wonderful animated short again if you have not seen it i highly recommend you go and do so it is on disney plus right now um but also i will say one sad thing unfortunately is that for a while a lot of people have been saying that apparently this short would appear alongside wish but Nowadays, that may not be the case anymore. Uh, there have been room, uh, apparently word has been going around that it's only going to be on Disney Plus. And uh, if you do want to see it in theaters, apparently uh, the only way you can do so is that, uh, well, right now Disney is going to be putting it up on um, alongside the uh, airing of Moana. Like, you know how Disney has been re-releasing their movies uh, as part of the 100 years of the, the company's history. And uh, apparently with Moana returning to the big screen, they're also going to go and put up Once Upon a Studio, which honestly for me, like considering that these 100th anniversary screenings are very limited, uh, it's kind of unfortunate that I might miss that chance. But still, though, it like... Uh, it's still a fantastic short so honestly i just wanted to go and have this little segment to go and fully talk about the the animated short to go and discuss about once upon a studio i think it, it like it's such a beautiful job that the the animators have disney has done and uh honestly there I, I i don't think i could think of a better way to go and honor the 100th anniversary of disney honestly it turned out to be as beautiful as I hoped for. And I know many people have already said this, but it did feel like uh, a beautiful dream come true. All right, so with that said, now I would like to go and pass this on to the chat wall. And I'd like to ask you all, what did you think of Once Upon a Studio? Do you have any comments that you would like to add in? Uh, also, what would be your favorite mo What is your favorite moment in Once Upon a Studio? Let me know what you think on that. All right, uh, let's see. I've seen this special and uh, I loved it. Seeing all the Disney characters come together, including the Disney villains, is a treat to my heart. Uh, the scene I like is where Elsa freezes Hans trying to get out of the picture frame, Splat having a crush on Ursula, Mickey Mouse speaking to Walt himself, and the Disney character singing When You Wish Upon a Star. I'm glad that Disney made it and made this short for everyone. Thank you, Walt Disney, for making what animation is capable of. Oh my god, yeah, and especially, like, that ending. I mean, like, some people could say it's a bit predictable of Disney doing so, but, I mean, that mega crossover with everyone singing When You Wish Upon a Star, like, that, it, it, it's such a beautiful moment. Like, honestly, one of the best animated highlights of the year. Especially, like, one thing that a lot of people have pointed out is, the reu is when you see both um, Snow White and Asha holding hands as they were singing, like, a bolt out of the blue. Because, like, a lot of people love the symbolism of the first Disney princess, uh, you know, being alongside the latest Disney princess. Which, by the way, like, seeing Asha in Wish, especially with her new animation style, like, oh my god. That honestly gives me a tiny taste of like what's to come with that movie. And oh man, the style is going to be beautiful. I love the style of Asha with what she got in uh, Once Upon a Studio. I can imagine it's going to turn out beautiful in the movie. All right, let's see what we got. Hearing this, uh, hearing this does make me happy, despite not having seen it, seeing it myself. I'm one of those people who doesn't care about spoilers. I have no idea when or if I will get to see it, as I unsubscribed from Disney Plus after growing disappointed with the company over the past few years, especially Iger's response to the strike. Disney still has to do a lot to win me, but really happy that this special occasion was a dream come true for other loyal fans, animators, voice actors, and many more. All right, let's see now. Uh, Once Upon a Studio was one of the best Disney animated short films ever made. I first watched it at El Capitan Theater with the animators so that I could review it for my channel. The short itself really showed that hand-drawn animation is still as amazing as ever, and uh, mixed mediums blends it pretty well. I'm so thankful that I visited the studio and seeing the references while walking around the place it was so much fun. Recently saw the short again at Animation is Film with the director, Dan and Trent. 
All right, awesome, man. Yeah, and I mean, they did a phenomenal job with blending everything together with the way that uh, all the computer animated characters and the hand-drawn animated characters are all interacting in this live action environment. Like this kind of mixed medium, like honestly, it's some of the best that you could find since Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The work that they have done to mix these together, like I know it is a true technical challenge, but they did a beautiful job with it. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, I remember watching the short last week and was uh, absolute. It was an absolute masterpiece of an animated short and a beautiful tribute to the company's 100th anniversary. And I even got incredibly emotional. Uh, some of the standout scenes were hearing dialogue from Robin Williams as Genie, Mickey looking at the picture of Walt Disney, and all the characters singing When You Wish Upon a Star. So overall, this was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it was actually great to see that... Uh, that little comeback of Robin Williams, the fact that they actually used uh, never before heard archival recordings of Robin Williams to bring him back as the genie on and, and of course they did get permission from the family. So that was honestly really wonderful to see. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Once Upon a Studio is a great tribute to Disney animation. I am happy and crying to see all the Disney characters reunited together uh, at the studio. Even voice actors came back while some used uh, from archives since they are no longer here. Speaking of that, we get to hear some unused recordings of Robin Williams as Genie under permission from his estate, which I already mentioned. By the way, I'm sad that Chicken Little didn't make some joke with other Disney characters. Well, I mean, he is there and I'm and like... If they want if for the characters that they want to go and highlight, I don't know if Chicken Little would be a high priority. That would be like asking the cows from uh, Home on the Range to have some kind of speaking dialogue. But I mean, they're perfectly fine in the place that they were where um, where you have Louisa just like carrying them. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. OK, hopefully you don't hear the leaf blower that is outside. I may have to do something about that. Uh, but anyways, um. I'll read one more comment before we go on to uh, the next break. I had the chance to check out Once Upon a Studio when it dropped on Disney Plus, and needless to say, damn what a short. It's funny, it's emotional, it's a remarkable celebration of the Disney pantheon. The mix of animation was somehow seamlessly done. Buller Hat Guy was in it. It's literally the perfect way to celebrate 100 years of Disney for now. Wish isn't out yet. Also, this is a total me thing, but if this short is the big 100 years of Disney celebration, how is there no Yen Sid? Hey, 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 uh, hold on a sec. I can guarantee you Yen Sid was there. I mean, he wasn't prominently there, but I mean, they do feature him right over here. Like he's right next to, uh, St like he's right next to Sisu and well, funny enough, next to the cows from uh, Home on the Range. So, I mean, Yen Sid was there. <laughs> I mean, you can't say he was not. <laughs> <laughs>